storm on the west old rocky something else I wanted to do and I was looking for a prop and I could not find it and I'm not going to do that without a, I need this prop and I you won't get it if you don't have the prop so I, I'm going to wait and I just I prayed I mean hard and I've been praying since I got up at 1130 this morning I've been praying <laughs> Titus chapter 2 some of you believe that. You ought to. But I'll just figure the Lord's in it. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. I was studying 2 Timothy. Hmm. I, I want to show you this. Can I, I might preach on it, but I want to show you this. 2 Timothy, hold on Titus, that's where I'm going in a little bit. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. That should be a page away, or maybe right there for you. Well, let me put that down, 2 Timothy 2. And we don't have time for this, but let's take time, can we? 2 Timothy chapter 2. Note what he says here. He says, um, oh, he starts the chapter. I love First and Second Timothy, and some of you may shy away because you feel that Paul is writing to preachers and it wouldn't have relevance to you. Man, there is a ton of stuff in those two books, a ton of stuff, and a ton of stuff in Titus. And so he begins chapter 2. Finishing out, writing to Timothy, verse 1, he says, he tells him, be strong. Verse 1, be strong. Now, therefore, my son, be strong. Be strong. That applies to you and I, not just preachers. Be strong. Verse 2, he says, the things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who should be able to teach others also. There are things that we ought to pass along. There are things that work. Amen. And so we then tell others, hey, want to share something with you. And I appreciate when you all do that. Many of you do that. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I want that. I don't know. When, when you do that, I don't go, oh, I already knew that. I, that's not true. Verse 3, he says, endure hardness. Endure hardness as a good soldier. I don't want to be a soldier. It's too risky. See all these soldiers coming home from Iraq? No legs. Face blood. I don't want that. Do you? Man, I'll take the uniform and all that, but I don't want, I don't want war. I don't want battle. He says we're to endure hardness. Verse 4, he says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Rough, rough verses. He goes on. Verse 9, I love verse 9. He said, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. In other words, for what I've done, they have shackled me. He said, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, verse 10, I endure all things. Verse 11, 
verse 11, it's a faithful saying. If we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. In other words, when Christ dies, we die. That's what God sees. And then he says, <laughs> isn't that great? We shall also live with him. Man, he's alive. He's alive. Verse 14, of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Verse 15, I want you to see the context of this. He tells, Paul writes, in jail, godly, not perfect, but godly. The same guy who wrote this is the same guy that said, the things that I should be doing, I'm not doing. You've been through that? Verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babbling. Hello? Hello? Sometimes there are some people that are not worth listening to. Say shun. Notice it says, though, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Every time I get bothered about me, I preach, you don't listen. I take it to God, and God goes, is that right? And I can hear someone say from heaven, preach till you're crucified. It's not up to me if somebody does what I say, it's up to me to say it. Verse 17, their word will eat as doth a canker. Man, I read that and that, that just stuck out. Same type of word, we get our word, cancer. Eat, eats away, eats away. I read that verse, I got on my knees. I'm not bragging, I'm just telling you what I did. I got on my knees, I said, Lord, don't let my words be like a cancer. We're supposed to speak words, Hebrews chapter 10, that edify. That when they're spoken, we're thankful for the person, we're thankful for what they said, and we're thankful that those words will help us grow. But sometimes our words are like a canker. He names a couple of guys there. Hymenaeus and Philetus. I mean, he's throwing out examples. And I'm assuming when he says, verse 18, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already. And then he says, and overthrow the faith of some. Wow! That can happen to people who believe the truth. And then he says, I love the word. Verse 19, nevertheless. Amen. Like, you know what it means in Greek? Big deal. Big deal. He says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. I, I got it, Titus. We don't have time. There's too much there. I'm going to preach on that someday. 
It's a sticky note already on my computer screen. A lot of sticky notes, man. I get dizzy. And... Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Paul writes to Titus. He says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Verse 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave, verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us. That means, redeem means set free. That he might set us free from all iniquity. How much iniquity? All. all. If you're not living redeemed, Something's wrong with you. Don't blame God. I don't know why God. They come to me. Preacher, I don't know why God. Whoa, 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 whoa. God, my Bible says he doesn't tempt any man to sin. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own love. Don't be going, I don't know why God. Who gave, verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people. Pe peculiar has the idea of only his. Nobody can't be peculiar. Not odd. Not strange. Private. For God. For you and I need to remember that. That when God saved you, he didn't save you because you needed it. He saved you because he wanted you. There's a big difference. When you look at salvation... Salvation. What did it cost God? His son. What did it cost you? Zero. So God figures when you trust him, he gets all of you. I mean, you and I have to live with that mindset all the time. When I wake up in the morning, I'm not mine. I don't, I don't say, what am I going to do today? I say, Lord, what do you want me to do today? That's why you get in trouble, and then you go, well, I, I don't understand. I prayed today. Wouldn't it be great if you got on your knees and said your little prayer and got up and everything went like it should? It doesn't work that way. He says, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Pray with me. Here we are, Lord. We're ready. Oh, we're ready. Please speak to us. Holy Spirit, have at us. Do what needs to be done, I pray. And I ask it in Jesus' name, and I need your help. Amen. Let me ask you an interesting question. You have control of your tongue. Here's your answer. Sometimes. Am I done? Do you have control of your emotions? I, I struggle with that one. I, I drive and get worked up. And I was born. I came out of the womb worked up. Do you have control of your eyes? 
Boy, there is so much. I mean, you can, it, it, it's almost like somebody with a hook reaches out and grabs your neck. The stuff that, that is, is there. Driving down the road. Right? Television. Do you have control of your thoughts? That's why. Let, let me say it. I'm not bragging. I, I don't watch TV without a book or my Bible. I don't want my thoughts to only be on that. When I drive, I read. When I drive, I pray. I let everything I see be a trigger. I, I want what I see, where I go. If someone looks like you, I pray for you. If something about someone reminds me of you, I pray for you. Because if I don't do that, I'll stew on something I shouldn't, and my thoughts will go wild. If I see something I shouldn't, I'll try to think about something else. Do you have control of your temper? Do you have control of your appetite? We all grow spiritually in different ways at different speeds, but we're expected to grow. Notice what Paul writes to the preacher. He said, verse 12, teaching us, us, that denying ungodliness. Deny, what a great phrase, denying ungodliness. That's part of our salvation. We're not, God, uh, uh, we're not ungodly anymore. So he says, we're supposed to deny ungodliness. Well, where are we ungodly? We're ungodly in our tongue. We're ungodly in our, our, our emotions. We're ungodly in our eyes. We're ungodly in our thoughts. We're ungodly in our temper. We're ungodly in our, our appetite. And he says, denying ungodliness. When a baby's born, they have no control over anything. They can't talk. They can't walk. They can't feed themselves. I mean, they cry, they learn that, that mama runs when they cry. They just eat. They, if they're hungry, they cry. Mama runs. Let's, maybe he's hungry. She just fed him. He cries again. Maybe he, you know, not as gas. Check the diaper. Could you check the diaper and see? Maybe he's wet and he doesn't like it. Well, that's just tough. Because if I'm watching you and you got a bad diaper, it's supposed to hold 8 to 12 pounds. <laughs> Yuck. But as time goes on, that baby... They learn, and they're expected to learn to do the things and do them well. So Paul tells Titus, Jesus is coming. Verse 13, looking for. How do you want to be found? Lazy? Do you want to be found busy? He said, the glorious appearing who gave himself for us. Every Christian that isn't growing probably has a control problem. They can't control their selfishness. They can't control their weakness. They can't control. I'm talking to you. I know what I'm saying. Don't think I'm talking to somebody else. Man, I know a lot of, a lot of Christians, not, not only... Are they weak? Not only are they selfish, a lot of Christians are rebellious. 
Remember what Samuel told Saul? To obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken as a fat of He said, uh, uh, stubbornness is his iniquity and idolatry. I'm not doubting. I think Saul was saved. Because he, he didn't obey God, he wasn't saved. We all in trouble. God teaches us, verse 12, Paul tells Titus, teaching us, teaching us. He doesn't force us. Can you imagine if God forced us? Remember when you'd sit there and your kids weren't hungry? You'd spoon that Gerber stuff in the jar green or, or orangish pink. You'd put it on that little plastic-coated spoon. Here comes the airplane. They're not that stupid. Who would eat an airplane? Here. And then they would go like this. Here's my kids. They just turn. Or I really loved it when you put it in their mouth, and then they went. We didn't whip them for that. We got frustrated, but we didn't whip them. Why? Because you can't force them when they're young. God doesn't force us. He doesn't force us to deny ungodliness, but he could. Sometimes he puts pressure on us. Sometimes he puts the squeeze on us. Really, the force isn't from God. If you're going to deny ungodliness, we're supposed to force ourselves. You know what that's called? Control. Man, it's tough, but you've got to do it. You've got to do it. God will not force you. A lot of Christians wait for that. I wish God would help me. No, you mean force you. That's what they mean. They don't mean hell. That or just, I wish you'd do it for me. Well, where do you come in? How do you, how do you pro, uh, promote or show him? Look, 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 verse 14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity, purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of what? If he forces you to do good works, let me tell you something. They're not good. They're God works. Good works means you force yourself. You take the control. Thank God for his grace. Verse 11, when the grace of God appears in your life, it seems as though Paul's saying to Titus, when the grace of God appears or comes in your life, then it's able to give you that control. Man, lost people can't do it. I was telling Amy the other day, you, you talk to different people or your neighbors and you think, boy, there's just nothing there. You know why? They're lost. Man, they're lost. I, 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 sometimes I just stand there and stare at them. See, I can't fellowship with them. But something happened to me when I found God's grace. It gave me the power to control myself to live. Like I should. I got a package in the mail. They kept telling me it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. UPS is bringing this package today. I don't know if you're into that, but I get phone alerts, and it'll be here between this time, and I'm sitting in my office at home, and I see the UPS guy. So I'm ready. I'm going to jump up. I run out there and go, hey, I want to save you the trip. You run all day. Mailman, if I see the mailman, I'll run out there. And he just drives up and goes like this. The other day I got it. I said, did that, was I a help to you? And he said, a little. I saw the UPS guy and I popped up. He drove down the street, made a circle and headed out. Pretty soon I'm sitting there and I see the guy that lives down in the corner where the UPS truck stopped. I see him carrying a package. He walks up to my door. Listen, I'm witnessing this guy. 
And I thought, Lord, you know everything you're doing. He comes to the door, he goes, hey, package for the church. He calls me to church. Package for the church. Came to my house. He said, it's a pack of money. Did you look? He goes, it is. I said, yeah, pay it. Lady. He said, it's heavy. I said, it's money. I said, maybe you should keep it. Well, if I would have known it's money. I said, no, I said, I know what it is. I'll give you one. They were a, a new, they're back in the table. It's a postcard. It says, everybody needs a home. And then on the back side is uh, uh, the plan of salvation in our church. I said, when I get these, I'm going to give you one. He goes, yeah, and then he, boom, was gone. A saved person wants wants to follow God. A saved person wants to do the right thing. A saved person follows God's instruction. Paul uses the word teaching. For you and I to have self-control, God brings conviction into our lives. And let me tell you something. If you have self-control, if you deny yourself ungodliness because you have Self, I'm going to do it this way, self-control. If you have self-control, you'll deny ungodliness, and that leads, of course, to godliness. Because if you're not ungodly, you're godly. You're, you're zealous of good. And all the thing, and I'm not going to go through this piece by piece, word for word. God's not demanding you and I be perfect. He's, he's demanding that we be in control. Do you realize every person that sins, it's a control. It's not the devil. It's control. And if you're here tonight and you refuse to deny ungodliness, if you refuse, look at verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, Boy, they're out there, aren't they? The world is everywhere. Man, you can't get up and go out into the world without some of it dripping on you. Man, it's everywhere. So we have to have the control. We have to deny that, not just ungodliness, but worldly lust. And we need to choose, verse 12, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world. We should live. We choose that. Jesus is coming back. Verse 13, Paul told Titus, he's not just coming back, he's going to make his answer for all that we've done. Ouch! I hope God gets Alzheimer's. Wouldn't that be nice? If he just forget a little bit, got news for you. He's not going to. He's going to make us answer for everything we've done. You know what makes it easy for me to be self-controlled? Can I share two verses with you, and then I want to share two points, and I'm done. Say, so you still in the introduction? Not your sermon. Don't worry about it. Just listen. Here's what makes it easy for me to be self-controlled. I realize that God sees me. Proverbs 15 and verse 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. He sees all, he doesn't want to see the bad, we do, but he does. Say they're crooked. Get a light. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Proverbs 15, verse 3. 
beholding, staring at, beholding, staring at the evil and the good. Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 21 says, For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his going. Wouldn't it be nice if every three seconds, some of you need it sooner, but every three seconds, if God said, I'm watching you, 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 wouldn't that help? That's why you got a Bible, you should read it. Two points, number one. Don't, don't provide for, I'm just going to put for flesh. Maybe it should be for the flesh. Don't provide for the flesh. That means be careful what you look at, be careful what you walk, be careful what you read, be careful where you go. Paul told the Romans, Romans 13 and verse 14, he said, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Remove yourself so you can put on Christ, be dead to self, and refuse to supply the flesh with fuel to sin. And man, it's everywhere. That's why he says, Titus chapter 2, verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that's a command. Denying. Identify with him. Don't be ashamed of him. Make him obvious. Imitate him. Make it so only Christ is seen in your life. It's the best way to be closest to him. Don't provide for your flesh. Number two. Labor to be more spiritual. Remember what he told Timothy? Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman. You, listen, please, please, please listen closely. You are in control of your spiritual growth. As I am. You are in control of your spiritual growth. Paul told the Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. He said, wherefore my beloved. As ye have always obeyed. Not as in my presence only. But now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation. With fear and trembling. You have to have the intention to be a spiritual Christian. It doesn't happen on accident. Look at me, listen to me. You don't show up to church and sit through this and become a good Christian. We saw that in the disciples. That didn't work. You have to intend to be a spiritual Christian. Every day, Jesus has to be your goal. Self-control requires that you aim at being more spiritual. So that means you need to make your body, listen to me, you need to make your body your slave, not your master. Did I tell you the story that Roger told me about one of the guys at the jail in Casopolis? Did I tell this story? You remember that? Ed Salva Mayor? When I preached there a couple years ago on Easter, I preach the message, God lives here. You've seen me preach that. Sometimes I wear a big sign. Sometimes I put stickers on. And I preach that in the jail, and I told the chaplain, I said, now listen, I'm going to preach this message, and I'm going to go around to workers and inmates, and I'm going to slap a sticker on them that says, God lives here, because that's where it lives, and you ought to look like it, and it'll make you think about what you say and where you go. And so he goes, no, that's okay. That'll be fine. So, man, I just pre I spit, rant, ray. I got on the floor, spun circles, and foamed at the mouth, and then I went all over slapping these stickers. 
Roger saw one of those guys last week, and he said, hey, is your pastor coming to the banquet? And Roger said, why? He said, because I still wear that sticker. God lives here. Wow. Your body is to be your slave, not your master. God lives here. You ought to fear anything that would steal your self-control. Hey, listen to me. I know self-control. I, I, I don't have it mastered, but I work very hard on it. You realize, don't you, that if you don't do the things you're supposed to do, let me use a phrase. If you don't do the things you're supposed to do, you'll crash and burn. I, I don't want to crash and burn, man. Jesus is coming back. I don't want to crash and burn. I want God to govern my life. Remember the questions at the beginning? Your tongue, your emotions, your eyes, your thoughts, your temper, your appetite. Your body's supposed to be your slave, not your master. That's how you get godly. Pray with me, your head bowed. Your eyes closed. Dear Father, I understand, I guess more, what Paul meant when he said the things that I should do, I don't. The things that I should be doing, I don't. The things that I shouldn't do, I, they, I do them. And Lord, that just makes perfect sense to me. I don't want it to. I need more self-control. I need to make sure, Lord, that I do what I can to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and live soberly and righteously and godly right now in this world, right now. Help me, Lord. Help me, please. I need it. I can't pray for anybody else, really. I mean, if I know exactly what they need, but I know we all need it. But tonight, you know me, and I'm asking you to help me to be godly. Help me, Lord, not to give my flesh any fuel. Help me not to provide for my flesh. As Paul said, put on Christ. And don't provide, make no provision for the flesh. Don't provide anything for it. Help, help me to do that. And help me to work harder. Help me to labor harder to be more spiritual. And, and God, it, it, whatever we do tonight, whatever we decide, whatever decision we make or don't make, we want you to be honored and pleased. Tonight, your head bowed, your eyes closed. Before we go, you say, preacher, God is speaking to my heart. I'm going to refuse to be ungodly. I'm going to refuse. Refuse. I'm going to refuse to be ungodly. Would you pray for me? God's speaking to my heart. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. God's speaking to my heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. May, may we live our lives like God lives in us, because he does. May we make that known. And when we fail, even though God lives in us, it's not a God failure. It's a self-control failure. Help us and bless us, please. I, I pray this. I ask this. I beg you, God. I beg you. Help us. To be godly. I pray this. In Jesus name. Amen.